So I'm going to attempt to try and make this video coherent. <laughs> oh, this is going to be difficult. I might as well begin, eh? Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now you may have noticed over the last... That's my dog. Look, I'm in my mid-30s, right? I've got four kids and my wife thinks, you know, what, you know what you need in your life? You need a puppy. Just when your life is as busy as it possibly can, I'm going to buy you a puppy. I mean, don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore her, I love her to bits, but my god, she's a pain in the arse. Anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah, so for the last three weeks or so, I was pretty busy. And it was pretty much because I was in production. And a couple of weeks before that, I was kind of working as well. And being a YouTuber, I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I just like to talk some shit and talk into a microphone. It's a bad move, especially in November, December, because this is when advertisers generally play a lot more money. Obviously, you get things like Christmas advertising, stuff like this. And you may have noticed it with certain YouTubers. They're up taking videos. They might go quiet, generally September, October. And then they'll just hit you with a video every single day. Which is fair enough, it's part of the game. Yeah, Andrew Price, I think he just released something like six videos. Dog, I'm going to take you down. Come here. Bijon Freeze. Great wee dogs, but nippy as fuck, by the way. Hey, you, calm down. Right. So, yeah, you may have noticed, I'm taking videos. When it comes to me, it was a complete opposite. And the reason for that is I was actually in production. Working on a fairly big gig, it kind of drew out and drew out and drew out. Good gig, company was brilliant to work for, blah, 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 good fun. But we actually decided to use Blender 3.0. I think we were actually using Blender 3.1 at one point, and part of the reason was, was mainly Cycles X, which kind of actually was a drawback in a certain degree. Now, I can't obviously tell too much about the job, but there were certain things that I found pretty good. Now, the build that I was actually using, I had a horrible bug. So if you went to separate the mesh, it just instantly crashed. Now, this was a daily build, to be honest, and they actually fixed it, I think, in a couple of patches. But as soon as you separated the mesh, it just went poof, dead. Another issue that I actually ran into quite a lot is it seemed to not write when rendering. And I don't know if it was a hard drive issue. I don't know if the hard drive wasn't fast enough when it was writing. But every 50, 60 frames... It would just give a dead frame, like the frame would become corrupt. Now, I don't think that's actually a Blender issue. I think that's actually more to do, even though I was writing to SSD, I'm not sure, but the render would just be absolutely corrupt. So I would need to go back and then re-render that frame. And that was a bit of a bitch, to be honest, like complete bitch. It was a nightmare, actually. And it you kind of lost like a day just re-rendering frames that should have been there. Now, what I do recommend that you do is headless rendering, and I'll make a tutorial on this, and there was actually another user that showed me the best way to do it. What you essentially do is you write a batch file, and you just execute that, and it'll run in headless mode, and it means it renders without actually opening Blender. It seems to be much more stable. And one of the advantages of doing it this way, if it actually crashes, you can see where it crashed. You can see what, if it was a texture or whatever. So yeah, headless rendering, definitely worth making a tutorial about it. Another thing that 3.0 done is it kind of changed a lot of stuff about and uh, I don't actually like some of the UI changes. Now I understand why they've done it, but uh, just look for example if you jump in here, you see this moving this down here, that uh, this is dead space to me even if you try to hide it and you can't flip it down the bottom, this part specifically, and they've moved the toolbar up here. I get why they've done it, and there's some things that are pretty good, and some things that are pretty shit, to be honest. So, but overall, I suppose Blender 3.0, even though it was in alpha at the time, it was pretty stable. Uh, I mean, you did get a few problems, and you're going to get that with any software, it doesn't matter what software you're using, if it's Modal, Lightwave, Maya, Houdini, whatever. Well, maybe not Houdini, that's solid as fuck. But, <laughs> generally, it was alright. And it was kind of stress-free, well, stress-free to a certain degree, but the software wasn't really the issue. Now, we did come across some limitations, and this actually boiled down to rendering. There's some things that we couldn't render out. Now, while metrics and EV is screen-based reflections, it's actually based on where the camera looks. So when you're trying to do a bigger view, I can't specifically talk about it, but it kind of fucked us up. So while metrics was bad, in fact, in cycles, it was absolutely 
horrendous. And for me to get a clean volumetric render, you were talking nearly 20 hours for one frame. And that's way, 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 way too much. Way too much. Cycles just did not handle the volumetrics, or it did not handle volumetrics in the context of the scene that I was actually making. So we went into Eevee. But that kind of threw up other problems. Uh, I also wrote a few tools when I was there because there was a few things that I just kept having to do in Blender and it wasn't there. Like the duplicate separate, much needed. Another thing that I wrote is if you actually just right click on something like this, you can just automatically put it into a collection and it actually writes the name of the file. So for example, if you right click here, it would write cube collection or whatever. And that came in handy, especially when using the asset browser. Now, I want to discuss the asset browser. It was a little bit temperamental. Now, it did come in handy, to be honest, and we did set up asset browsers and everything was linked into a new scene, stuff like this. Uh, thumbnails crashed. Crashed straight away when trying to generate thumbnails. Uh, so it was pretty much default thumbnail, to be honest. It was, was alright. We kind of knew the file structure and stuff like this, but the asset browser, yeah, I like it. I think it's really good. I think it's really important. I think I still think it's about four or five months off of development of being fully featured um, or being stable enough that to use it. What else did I run into? I had to use particles a few times. Particle system in Blender needs work. It, it just needs work. It's flexible, but not flexible enough. You know, I mean, it kind of, kind of fucks you up. So, yeah, overall, generally, the experience was pretty easy. I enjoyed it. It was good fun. Now, a lot of these woes could obviously be offset by saying, well, you were using it in alpha mode, or it wasn't a stable release. Look, it generally doesn't matter when you use software. They just advertise it as unstable. You're going to get these problems either way, even if you're using 2.93 LTS or whatever. So, yeah, it was good fun. It's production ready, definitely. Will I use it in other gigs? Of course I will. It's a good tool. Anyway, yeah, I think that's my December quote I've done for the day. Do my favourite, guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ugh, I'm tired, man. Half past nine. Anyway, take care.